Hello, hello. Thank you for waiting. So please, it's now. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the Interacuramid program, and all the best to all for this new adventure. Bem-vindos ao programa Euromed e boa sorte a todos por esta nova aventura. Bem-vindos ao programa Euromed e muita sorte a todos em esta nova aventura. Bem-vindos ao sangue do programa Interreg Euromed e boa chance a todos por esta nova aventura. Bem-vindos ao programa Interreg Euromed e boa fortuna a todos por esta nova aventura. Merhaba fil program Interreg Euromed u auguri lil kulħadd għal din l-avventura l-ġdida. Dobru dawx li u programu Interreg Euromed im sena jibol xe priskup nem s-sotinivanja. Dobru dawx li u program Interreg Euromed i sretnu svima u nove nove avventuri. Dobru dawx li u Interreg Euromed program i puno srenče svima u nove nove avventuri. Dobrodošli u Interreg Euromed program i sretno svima u ovoj novoj aventuri. Mir se vidi na program in Euromed i uroj in fat të mbar në këtë aventur të re. Gja sas, e kmeru shi se radhas, sa skalosorizm e shto neo programa Interreg Euromed që fhoma ste kali tihi se olu sas, sti ne afti proklisi. Kalos istare so programa Interreg Euromed që kali tihi se olu zi afti di nea beribetia. Ni predstavljamo sve na čest i zadovoljstvo da vidimo nova členka na Interreg Euromed programata i da započnemo ova avantura s ovas. Štosljivi smo da budemo novi členovi na programa Interreg Euromed i da započnemo tvoje priključenje zajedno. Welcome everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Lisbon. Bienvenue à Lisbon. Benvindos à Lisboa. And welcome to the kickoff event of the new Interreg Euromed program 21-27, heading towards a greener Mediterranean. It's a pleasure to finally, finally be reunited and be able to welcome you here in Lisbon despite the last couple of years we've just had and the latest kickbacks that prevented some of you from coming. But for those of you that have made it, well done, and we're very pleased to see each other again. And for all of you, the many of you watching from home, from the office, we dearly miss you, and we hope that uh, you, we will get to see each other very, very soon again in real life, because we, I think we all really miss that. And uh, of course, times are still tough, and uh, we are constantly adapting to these new situations. And um, and uh, we would have been a lot more in in different circumstances here today. But we know that we have over 800 people joining us online today. So it's it's really it, it's a sign that we we are pro going in the right direction. But still, we have adapted to to this new situation. And it shows that we are, of course, very popular with 800 people uh, joining us online and maybe 150 here. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but uh, it shows, more importantly, that we have uh, some great interest in our region and, of course, a tremendous potential. Um, in any case, wherever we are, wherever we are here in Lisbon or anywhere across the Mediterranean, um, we are all connected around uh, a common ambition, common topics, uh, we, we all share them. It, and it's to make the Mediterranean a more sustainable and a greener place to live. And we have taken a lot of important steps uh, towards this goal, together with you, with our partners, with uh, our projects, to, to all the fantastic work that our projects have been doing. Um, 
so here's to the, the, the new step, the start of this new step in this journey, in this new adventure. And what better occasion to celebrate than to start to launch this new programming period with you. OK. I think we can, I can have a little break <laughs> with the start of this adventure, take off my back, and um, do a quick uh, housekeeping announcements for those of you uh, watching remotely and for you, you here. Um, we have simultaneous translation uh, available with the headsets that you picked up at the entrance and also on the event website. So you can uh, choose the channel for the, the respective language here. Um, and for those of you online, you can easily switch uh, between languages using the little flags uh, on the top right-hand corner of the website. Um, you can also follow the, the live stream of the event from our website directly or using the link that's, that's on the website. Um, we have uh, also been active on Twitter promoting this event, and you have as well. So make sure that you follow the event using the hashtag EuromedKickoff and share your, your thoughts, your, your moments here in the conference, and uh, show the world that you're here. But importantly, um, the, the way for you to interact with us today will be through a website called Menti, menti.com, where uh, I invite you to log into uh, now uh, and type in the uh, numbers here to join the, 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 the event. And this is where you will be able to ask all your questions. We won't be able to take questions directly from the, the audience, obviously, as you know why. But, um, but the, this is the way we'll take questions. We'll pick up some of them and answer them on the screen. Um, so to get you warmed up with using Ment Menti, uh, we shall start with a couple of questions, easy questions, for you to get familiar with it and know how to answer questions later on. Uh, OK. I don't know if we are displaying the questions or not. But in any case, I would like to know, where are you from? So which country do you come from, or are you connecting from today? And second question is, um, what's your own personal status? How are you feeling right now? What's your, your inner weather in the beginning of this journey? Are you happy? Are you, are you sad? Are you motivated? Are you excited? Are you in, in desperate need of a holiday? You, you can say whatever you're feeling like. And while we are logging into Menti and, uh, and replying to these two questions, uh, let me take you through today's agenda, see what we have in store for you today. Let's have a look. Oh, sorry, I, I was too quick. Huh. OK, I, I will just say in, in a few words where, what we have planned for you today. Um, we will have first a few introductory words from our hosts. Um, and then, uh, importantly, we will have a series of presentations from the InterregMed Joint Secretariat who um, will introduce the new missions of the new program and what is at stake in order for all of us to start off on the right foot. After a, uh, a coffee break, we will welcome in the second part uh, some dear colleagues from other programs and stakeholders around the MED area in a panel discussion, in a round table, to discuss opportunities uh, to, to coordinate our, our efforts, our, our common work in this new approach and in this new era for the Mediterranean. Uh, importantly about uh, timekeeping, as you keep answering those, uh, is it working? The, I'm, I'm being told that maybe on the Menti, maybe not. Now it is? OK. If you're able to, to answer these questions, hopefully it's working. Um, we, in terms of, of timing, we are uh, having just a relatively short event to uh, symbolize the launch of this event. Um, so we will have to close the event at 4.30 p.m. Uh, in only a, a few hours already. And um, we will have a lot to introduce to you in the meantime. So it will have to be uh, sharp. And it's 4.30 uh, Lisbon time. And as you know, in the Mediterranean, 
uh, we like to do things at large, and we are spread across three different time zones. So 4.30 means 5.30 in central Mediterranean, and 6.30 for our friends in Greece, Bulgaria, Cyprus. So that's why we need to be on time, because for them, it will be very late if we run out of time. One last thing before we start. Uh, I would like to introduce a special guest we have today, Mr. Uh, Daniel Lanka Perdigao. Daniel is here. Um, he's, a, he's a journalist. A journalist. He, he does a fantastic job of turning our complicated presentations with lots of details um, into easy to understand illustrations, drawings, uh, to summarize everything. So he will be with us throughout the event and he will be taking notes in his own special way. And uh, we're, we're grateful that you're here. So thank you, Daniel. And uh, we, we look forward to seeing what you, you prepare for us and we'll, we'll check with you several times during, during the event. Okay, uh, I think we can have a look now at your, your answers. If we can have that displayed to see where you're from and who are the most popular. Uh, okay, let's have a look first at what Daniel will be, will be doing. This is the blank canvas that will then be coming to life with the information that we'll introduce to you, which hopefully is not too complicated and it's something that you will um, embark with us on. So hopefully we, we will have all of you uh, in, 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 in following this and, uh, and in any case you can, you can uh, ask questions and we will pick them up as we go along. And first, can we have a look at the answers to see if we had sufficient, uh, uh, a sufficient amount of answers and if you have uh, been able to use Menti correctly because I wasn't sure about that. Okay. Drum roll. Maybe it's not working, I don't know. Maybe we will move on with, um, with the first introduction speech and then, oh, hang on. Or not. We are in this, in this journey all together, so thank you. It's been a while that we have been able to, to organize uh, an event in real life. I don't know about you. I know some projects have been able to have meetings in the last few weeks, but for me, it's the first time that I've been able to travel and see uh, all of you, or, I mean, see, see partners in real life since February 2020. So it's, it's, um, it's been a long time coming, and of course, there will be maybe some hiccups, but uh, we'll try and make it as smooth a journey as possible for all of you. Um, and starting with the, the introductory uh, speeches, um, first we will have some uh, welcome words from uh, our hosts, our ho host country and Miss Isabel Ferreira, uh, who couldn't be with us today, but uh, she wanted to give us uh, a warm wel welcome regardless um, and, uh, and wish us a nice uh, start to this journey. So. Uh, we will start with, with her words. I regret not being able to be present as it was my intention, but fortunately the technological means allow other options and I am glad that I can be with you virtually. It is with great satisfaction that Lisbon hosts the Heading Towards a Greener Mediterranean event. I must say that as a Portuguese citizen, I am very pleased that this event is taking place in Portugal under the Portuguese presidency of the Monitoring Committee. The European Union has defined the European Ecological Pact, the Green Deal, as its topic priority. The Interreg programs were given the mission of mobilizing the strategic objective to a greener, more sustainable, more resilient Europe as their main priority. 
determined to contribute to making Europe the first carbon neutral continent, the 14 countries responsible for preparing the programmatic document, which will be presented in January to the European Commission for approval, joined their best efforts. And the Euromed program, which we celebrate here today, financed by the ERDF, is an important milestone to achieve this goal in the Mediterranean area. However, despite the importance of this team, Euromed represents more than an investment in decarbonization or green technologies. This investment requires everyone to participate in the transition process, ensuring a better future and guaranteeing that no region will be left behind. In fact, we all must be involved in this mandatory change. Commissioner Elisa Ferreira stated that a society is as resilient as it shares experience and good practices, as it is able to spread and involve all citizens contributing to the overall process of sustainable development. Interreg programs, and this one is no exception, hold a wealth of inspiring experiences that can and should be enjoyed by all. The experience exists and we are committed to making the best possible use of the acquired knowledge. On the northern coast of the Mediterranean Sea, the Euromed program covers a vast territory from Lisbon to Nicosia. In fact, the eligible geographical area of the program corresponds to about 25% of the whole European Union area. The juxtaposition of such diverse regions creates both opportunities and challenges for differentiated development. Its climate, geography, or authenticity are real assets, both as a place to live and for tourism, and the program area is rich in biodiversity and agricultural potential. However, the region, even though it is the number one touristic destination in the world, is under tremendous pressure, mainly due to human action and the upsetting vulnerability to climate change. Thus, this program should be materialized as a strong contribution to the sustainable development of the Mediterranean area. It is imperative to protect the identity of the Mediterranean basin, to implement actions capable of attenuating the progressive environmental stress to which it is subjected, preserving biodiversity and cultural heritage and respecting its unique geography. This is also an area where the, there is an enormous potential for creating and maintaining jobs through sustainable environmental management. The circular economy, a strong proposal of the program, is a source of creation green jobs in line with the forecast of creating 700,000 jobs by 2030 under this team. At the same time, it allows for the reduction of waste and reduction of energy consumption, helping to prevent irreversible damage to the planet. The commitment to an economy strongly based on local communities with a reduction in energy consumption and the transition from fossil fuels 
to 100% clean energy has a positive impact on the economy, on preserving the environment and consequently on citizens' life. We are aware of how much has been accomplished over the last 30 years of Interreg implementation, but we are also conscious that much remains to be done and this is where we must focus our efforts. To achieve these ambitious goals, we need to join strengths. The journey will be extensive. It will require major changes in lifestyles, conception patterns, production methods. But the destination pays off. The vision of a carbon neutral Europe with sustainable growth, where biodiversity is preserved and green job creation is encouraged, is, is, is exciting. And there could not be more inspiring starting point that the city of Lisbon awarded last year as the European Green Capital. Thank you all and accept my best wishes for a fruitful and rewarding event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Ferreira, for, for these very inspiring words. And if you're watching us, uh, I hope you're, you're, you're doing okay. And, uh, and we, we wish you, were, you had been here with us, but uh, it is great. And, uh, it's, it's really important, the messages that you, you've managed to make us um, inspired with, the, with, with these introductory words. So um, let's have a look now at the answers from our two little polls that we, we started to see where you're from. And uh, as, as, as we can see, we have a lot of the, the usual uh, Mediterranean countries and also maybe not mentioned here, but I know that we have, as you have seen from the, the introductory uh, videos, a lot of different um, countries that may not be represented today, but in any case, that um, are part of our program. And um, we, we will see that later on uh, in more detail in our presentations. We have uh, a second uh, introductory speech. Uh, from uh, the, the managing authority representative of the managing authority. And I would like to invite on stage uh, Mrs. Caroline Posmontier Sportich, who is a uh, regional councillor at the, at the um, Région Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur, who is the managing authority of the Interreg Med program. Thank you very much. You've just made it in time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I apologize for being late because I was uh, visiting Lisbon and uh, it allowed me to have a good visibility of that city but was dropped off uh, in the wrong place. So. I would like to say, dear Mediterranean friends, friends of European Territorial Cooperation, it's with great pleasure that I'm here with you. And on behalf of the president of the Regional Council, Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur, Mr. Renaud Musulier, as representative of the managing authority of Euromed, Inter Interact Euromed. The uh, Provence Alpes Côte d'Azur region has been exposed to the effects of climate change. We know that the Mediterranean is the second terrestrial region which has been mostly affected by climate change after the Arctic. It's warmed of uh, 1.5 degrees, warmed up. The water shortage will pose serious problems in the next decades and the level of the sea could rise up to one meter uh, by 2100. I'm not here mentioning just that uh, situation. I'm here to recall 
the work we've been doing together, the construction we have been engaged in. We know that with President Renaud Muselet, how uh, climate action is essential, and its president and most of its elected representatives have made quite a lot so that climate change um, be focused on uh, during his previous mandate and during his uh, recent mandate, we have we've been able to be quite pleased by the choices objectives based on the third edition of this third edition uh, from now on interreg Euromed. This program is a hundred percent based on the Green Deal, which had been presented just two years ago by the European Commission. It represents 235 million euros of ERDF financing, European Funds for Regional Development, and IAP, which will be made available until 2027 for activities promoting a better waste management, uh, protection of our marine land, fauna, and flora, coastline, and cities a research and consolidation of clean, more effective energy, the assertion of an economic de of economic development respecting the environment, tourism, and uh, for innovative and sustainable transport. So tapping of natural resources should be more and more respectful, should be and become more respectful of our environment. In view of the multiple challenges affecting our beautiful Mediterranean, such a financial engagement can remain subdued on a basin of approximately 150 million Europeans and Mediterranean. Is it really a small drop in the ocean? Can we say it is such a small drop? And that is why synergies and complementarities with other programs initiatives, national and European strategies should be found and implemented so that this small drop in the ocean be transformed in a river um, by 2030, thanks to everyone's effort and contribution. All action and investment of the Interreg Euromed program will have more impact if we all work together. Heading towards the same direction for a single and unique Mediterranean, which is quite an ambition. Despite of its physical and administrative borders, a Mediterranean characterized, uh, ladies and gentlemen, by its links, connections between the sea and mountain, islands and continents, cities and rural uh, regions. Yes, this cooperation that we aim at should promote north-south, east-west cohesion following the current and does not stop at the limit of a country's territorial waters. Ladies and gentlemen, this journey this afternoon and tomorrow marks the transition between the two programs, 2014, 2020, 2021, 2027, and welcomes also two new traveling companions, two new companions, the region, Spanish regions of Castilla y León, Estremadura y Madrid, as well as the republics of Bulgaria and north of Macedonia. Therefore, 14 country partners, 69 regions from Lisbon, where we are today, until Nicosid, that are united through European territorial cooperation by searching for a greater effectiveness and unity at a transnational level. So the Commission, as its citizens expect it, we should be more effective, more concrete in view of the urgent challenges that the Mediterranean is confronted to. And I will be mentioning them, that is migration, climate, water and air pollution, uh, rising sea level, young youth unemployment. So the future Mediterranean cooperation taking into account all these elements supporting 
itself on its past experiences and to bring feasible solutions for the uh, basin and its interland. Yes, as I've said, it it's a cooperation we want to be extended to our neighbors of the South that can contribute effectively to meet these uh, multiple challenges of the of 2021. The Provence-Alpes-Côte d'Azur region as management authority for the 2021-2027 programming to work along these lines, fully engaged, always within a good collaboration and complementarity with other Mediterranean programs. In fact, united we stand, and this union can only be the result of a better coordination, inter-program coordination to make more effective our common action. So without further ado, I hope that your work is very productive and I hope and I'm quite sure that the exchanges that will take place as those that started some years ago will bring you or will bring a new, will bring new elements of reflection so that we can share a new vision of the European territorial cooperation and implementation during 2021-2027. We really need that Europe closer to our citizens, closer to our Euro-Mediterranean, and thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Words. I think we're all set now and motivated to, to start with this new adventure. And as you have heard, we have some um, new members of the MED family that have joined us. So um, I, I would like to give them the, the warmest welcome possible to our representatives from North Macedonia and Bulgaria. So if, if maybe there are some of you in the room, can you please wave or... Thank you. Thank you. We are very glad. Thank you. We're very pleased to have you with us. And uh, we, we, we can't wait to start working with you and also with the three new Spanish regions of Extremadura, Castilla-La Mancha and Madrid that are um, also joining the MED family. Okay. Um, I've, uh, I've been told that people are desperately waiting, uh, trying to find uh, uh, networking options online. Unfortunately, with the platform that we have for this event, uh, it's only a live streaming, so we're not able to offer any chat rooms or, or networking options. Um, but hopefully soon we will have some of these features available from our new website, uh, which we hope we'll be able to introduce to you very soon. Um, but in the meantime, for today, uh, if, if you can make yourself uh, uh, visible online um, from, from, from the usual uh, means, then the, the, this is, this is uh, the way to do it for now. Sorry about that. Uh, so I think we're ready to start uh, properly to kick off well, the, the, this, new, this new journey, this first step. And for this first step uh, to, to, to materialize, you need to have all the information. Um, so the new program, the Interreg Euro Med 21-27, um, you've heard this one extra word, Euro Med. So there's indeed a slight difference. And um, yes, we are welcoming some new territories. Uh, to the cooperation area. But this new word also symbolizes a new approach. Uh, this is what we will present to you today. Uh, before we, we welcome my colleagues from, uh, from the JS, um, I will let you go into a journey through the 2014-2020 Interreg Med projects uh, with a short video that was presented during the Interreg SLAM competition organized by Interact uh, to to see well, what we have done in, the, in this previous current programming period. And, um, and this is the context, this is the base for, for the new program. The textile and clothing sector in the Mediterranean has suffered a lot from the economic crisis. For young designers and artists who wish to innovate, 
cooperating with other industries and countries can open up new ideas and new markets. Could connecting with others even revive a sector and spread traditions in the entire world? This is what happened in Italy, Spain, Slovenia, and Greece, where like-minded researchers and entrepreneurs created hubs gathering artists, startups, and textile and clothing companies. Together, they designed new products and materials, expanded their work to new territories, and showcased the Mediterranean heritage and innovation all over Europe and the world. They called this initiative the Creative Wear Project. And just like that, good ideas and traditions are spread across the globe. Monitoring thousands of kilometers of coral reef and species underwater is nearly impossible with just a handful of scientists. And it is costly. But what if you could train thousands of amateur divers to help you? This is the great idea that researchers, environmental NGOs, and national parks from Croatia, Italy, and France had. Together, they founded the MPA ADAPT project and partnered with the main leisure diving certification, PADI, and the Divers Alert Network, DAN, to train diving instructors to monitor the impact of climate change on marine protected areas in the Mediterranean. These diving instructors are now training other recreational divers, slowly but surely shaping the climate change army of tomorrow. Thousands of divers have been and will be sensitized to the influence we have on the sea and its fragility. The project went even further and trained scientists and project managers from other environmental organizations, such as the Food and Agriculture Organization, so their tools are now used everywhere in the Mediterranean. What do these projects have in common? They all count on amazing partners who knew how to use their contacts, expand them, and transfer their tools and knowledge. Last but not least, they were supported by a community of projects working together, sharing good practices, and helping each other, because this is what European cooperation projects do. This is what we strive for at the Interreg Med program. We provide funds for ambitious European cooperation projects and then go further and back them up by coordinating all their ideas and initiatives. Okay. Thank you. Yes, that was impressive, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, I hope you, you enjoyed the video and uh, it gave you even more motivation from seeing what we can do to join us in this new adventure and take it even further. So now let me welcome my dear colleagues from the Joint Secretariat. We have Sophie Scarvelis, Christophe Meyer, Pascal Lagaille and Lidwin Lafontaine who will give you an overview of the main characteristics of this new program and all you need to know uh, before embarking with us on this journey. Don't forget to use Menti to ask questions about the presentations you're about to see. Um, as, as, um, depending on the time we have, we will take two, three questions maybe uh, in two different sets after two presentations and another set of questions after the two other presentations. And uh, if we cannot take your questions today, we, we will have them in any case and we'll make sure to answer the, the relevant ones about the new program uh, on our website. And if there are questions specific to the, the course that we will launch soon, um, you will also have plenty of opportunities to get answers about these um, very soon. So we will start with you, Sophie. Sophie is going to present us the context of the cooperation program, where we stand now what we have achieved so far, and what is ahead of us. You're going to speak in French, right? So, headsets on for the translation. Thank you. Sophie, the floor is yours. Bonjour à tous. Je suis ravie de vous retrouver ici, à Lisbonne, et aussi à travers vos écrans. Good, morning. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to see you again. The four corners of the Mediterranean. We're quite proud to present to you this new program, 
we chose to focus on what would be essential so as to have more access to inf if you want more access if you want to access more information you can consult our um, site and other seminars which will be organized next year before going into the subjects let's go back to some basics for those that are not familiar with European programs or with territorial cooperation. So the Interreg Euromed program falls within the cohesion policy that is second objective, European territorial cooperation. This program is transnational. Every seven years, the European Union revises the strategy to allocate European funds so as to meet the new EU challenges and provides a regulatory framework that the programs will comply with. Each program receives funding and allocates uh, subsidies or grants to specific projects. Um, contents and modalities are decided by the participative um, states and agreed on by the Commission. I will summarize quickly what has been done on 2014-2020, and then I'll be presenting an overview of the Euromed program for 2021 as decided by the participated states but not yet approved by the Commission. So the Interreg Med, the 2014-2020 Interreg Med has promoted sustainable growth around the basin, so we worked on these different um, items which contributed to three priorities, innovation, low carbon economy, and environment. This, uh, climb, this program also joined government so as to define a common vision, a common framework within a transnational governance. So it allowed to identify, to implement approaches, policies, strategic projects on three uh, thematic axis that is uh, coastal maritime maritime surveillance and innovation in blue economy. These projects allowed many stakeholders, either institutional, scientific, technical, political, private, to work and to have a dialogue, a joint dialogue at different levels and different sectors, so as to find innovative solutions by those challenges um, shared by all. So over 823 partners that worked on one uh, or several uh, projects between 2014, 2021, and some still are working today. These are different types of complementary projects that allowed to achieve the program's objectives with production, a high quality as well. Many were transferred, integrated into policies totaling 140 projects that form Interact Med, so 60 are still ongoing. And it's within this continuity that the new program was created, inspiring itself on project typologies, capitalization of climate change, and also of working methodologies, joint ones which were deployed. Not forgetting the works started by the Mediterranean actors, for a better governance. Now, let's take a look at how the Interreg Euromed, how it was um, designed. I'm not going to take uh, too much time about geography, not to speak about it. So the north of the Mediterranean from Portugal to Cyprus. So now we're linking the Atlantic to the Black Sea with the uh, by welcoming two new countries. So 14 countries that are eligible to receiving co-funding from the program, either member states, candidate, con candidate countries, or potential candidates. This co-funding can achieve 80% of the budget which has been allocated to a project. And also what's very important today is collaboration with the southern east part of the Mediterranean. So it's very important so as to achieve the program's ambition to involve, engage the partners from the south and east of Mediterranean as partners associated to the project. It means participating 
in several activities that be that can be supported by some partners or associated partners. So we'll take a look at later on how this could be implemented and what are the tools that we foresee to set up to improve this cooperation. But what we'd like to respond to, what is the aim of inter med The challenge is to contribute to a transition which is climate neutral and resilient. So indeed, the Mediterranean has many resources that are protected from global changes impact that are to protect while ensuring sustainable growth and the well-being of all our citizens. So this ambition goes further than what is what a program can do by itself with standard project. It has to gather different stakeholders in the Mediterranean, and that's why endeavoring these efforts can really create an impact on our projects and territory. And to be able to do so, to achieve, we need to change our way of cooperating. We need to develop, deploy means and cooperation tools, and then we need to be structured. So the interreg med focuses on environment and climate, and there therefore it's fully aligned on the Green Deal as well as the sustainable development goals of the United Nations and Territorial Agenda 2030. It supports several policies and initiatives, either European or Mediterranean, linked with climate and the environment. So as to follow this principle, it's very important to also be involved in implementing this project and how each, uh, each project has to show the carbon footprint of activities to be implemented. Three, we will be making available different tools so as to deploy, develop so solutions, carbon compensation on the territory so that the citizens of our territorial can work along these uh, lines. I'm going to pass the floor to my dear colleagues so as to explain in more details how we're going to implement all what I have said until now. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Uh, merci. Yeah, and we have now a broad picture of what, what's ahead of us. Uh, so now uh, that we have this full picture, we can move on to Christophe, if you will. Can you please tell us how the program was designed and how it will be articulated? I think that's important for us to understand so that we can better respond to this overall objective that was set. Christophe, take it away. Thank you, Nicola. OK, um, we are starting again with uh, priorities. So uh, we have uh, three priorities for this new program. We have SmarterMed. Ah, OK. One second, I have. OK. Um, so we have smarter med and greener med. These are thematic priorities. And then we have a third priority, which is med uh, governance. And uh, this priority is uh, the backbone for the capitalization of the results into policy actions and cooperation and coordination with other programs in the area. OK. Now we are going to, look, uh, to, to have a closer look uh, at the thematic priorities first. Um, we have uh, smarter met and greener met, and uh, those thematic priorities are working on specific objects, specific objectives. Now, these specific objectives, um, where do they come from? For that, we have to, to take a step back and have to uh, consider that we are working in a context of uh, European territorial uh, cooperation. And uh, a lot of programs are working in this context, and we have a set of objectives that are somehow to be selected by each program. So this has been done also for uh, Euromed. 
the last years. And many of you have participated in this uh, process. And uh, it has been a transnational consultation process. Now we can have a look on, on uh, what uh, objectives we can find here. So concerning Smarter Met, we can find uh, developing and enhancing research and innovation capacities and the uptake of advanced technologies. This is the one uh, contributing to Smarter Met. Okay, Greener Met, we have um, several uh, specific objectives. First of all, we have uh, promoting the transition to a circular and resource efficient economy. Then we see it here as three. We have um, promoting climate change adaptation, disaster risk prevention, resilience, and all this taking also into account the ecosystem-based approaches. And we have another one which is targeting uh, enhancing and protection, enhancing protection and conservation of nature, biodiversity, green infrastructure, and uh, taking also into account urban areas and uh, the reduction of all forms of pollution. So, as you have seen, this is um, quite uh, a package. So, um, these objectives, however, they are important because uh, for those that are planning to, to submit projects to the program, this is where these objectives come in. So, you are um, submitting your project to one of these objectives. Okay, but in order to adapt them on an operational way to uh, the program, now we have to deal with uh, missions. We have uh, four missions for that matter, and uh, this operational concept of missions is new in this program. We, it's not something we take from the last program, and it's also not, for those that are working with other programs, it's not uh, what all the programs are doing. So these missions are bundling the identified thematic issues based on the logics of the program and the experience with the thematic communities of the last program, the 1420 period. And uh, when we start to work with you, uh, community building, many communication activities, the majoring and uptake of results will be guided by the concept of the missions. So this is when the missions will, be, uh, will come in. Okay, here we have the, the four missions now. Uh, strengthening an innovative sustainable economy. We have protecting, restoring and valorizing the natural environment and heritage. We have promoting green living areas and we have enhancing sustainable tools. Now we are going to have a closer look at each of them. So here we have mission one which is oriented to research, innovation, advanced technologies, and the transition to a circular and resource efficient economy. So what I want to do now is to, to, to give you already an outlook on, on, on related to your project ideas. So um, what you can do with this, uh, within this mission, or what, what uh, the projects will work with, for example, just to give you examples, always taking into account that what I am mentioning here as examples is an indicative list. Of course, there are many other examples as well, but just to make it a little bit more visible for you, okay. So um, we have, for example, concerning uh, small and medium enterprises, uh, internationalization, uh, uh, competitiveness, we have um, circular production, um, or we have, uh, it has been mentioned also previously, blue and green climate jobs, or also concerning waste into resource. Mission one. Now, mission two. Um, the scope of mission two is protecting, restoring, and valorizing the natural environment and heritage. Okay, we will uh, go to the more concrete side. What could this mean? Uh, this could mean, for example, to, to, to work on restoring degraded ecosystems. 
one example. Another example is a transnational connection of ecosystems or conservation of coastal and marine biodiversity. And finally also, and, and, and another example, this, mean, this is, for example, the connection of social value of biodiversity. Okay, mission three uh, takes up the, the, the objective of promoting green living areas. Here you can see what we un understand by, 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 by green living areas. And if you look again on the more concrete side, um, this could mean uh, prevent climate change impact on health, energy transition, for example, also citizens' involvement to green transition, or to cope with accelerated warming and uh, water scarcity. Okay, now mission four, uh, which is uh, scoping enhancing sustainable tourism. What, what do we have here? We have um, tourism integrated into circular economy, as an example. We have also tourism that is uh, directing towards environmental neutral uh, tourism activities. We could also see uh, promoting sustainability of ecosystem services connected to tourism, or promoting the preservation of natural resources and cultural heritage. Okay, now you have seen uh, the four missions, and uh, I'm Going back to this, what you can see here, why have we chosen these jigsaw pieces for uh, the four missions? Well, this is because, uh, as you see, they are not separate, they are interlinked, they are connected, and as you can see, the jigsaw pieces are not giving the whole picture. We are also connected, as the program is connected, to other programs and other initiatives. So this is the idea of uh, the, the jigsaw pieces. Okay, to resume, uh, again, we, 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 we come back now to, to missions and, and specific objectives. So what do we have? We have, uh, concerning uh, the four missions, we have research and innovation circular economy. They are taken up by uh, innovative sustainable economy. Then we have climate change risk prevention, which is integrated into the mission Green Living Areas. And we have, uh, again, climate change risk prevention and nature and biodiversity, which are taken up by protecting, restoring, and valorizing the natural environment and heritage. This is the mission site again. And now we have uh, sustainable tourism as a mission which is taking up all four specific objectives. So this is uh, to resume a little bit, um, give you an insight in, in, in our architecture. I call our moderator again to... Thank you. Thank you very much, Christoph. Okay, we have the missions now. We are clear and we know what's, what's um, available for us to, to work on and we know in which direction we're going. Uh, I'm sure we have some questions already, so we will... Okay, it seems like we have four, okay. So uh, we will take them one after the other and colleagues, if you want to pick them up. Um, the first one is, are projects with maritime potential allowed? What do you think? I think, yes, in any case, maritime, the maritime dimension is something that's inherent to, to, to the Mediterranean area, and they can be, this, this thematic can be found in all four missions. So, for sure, this is something that will be crucial, as it has been in the 2014-2020 in the period. Of course, there will be a very important maritime dimension to the new missions, as they can be found in all topics um, in our missions. Second question, is the concept, the idea of missions, the same as in the Horizon Europe program? Uh, I don't know. For sure, it's, uh, 
it, it, our idea is that we will connect with programs in general, not only other cooperation programs, but also thematic programs. So there will be some links that will be made with the thematic programs, such as or Horizon or Life or other topics. But um, the, to be honest, I'm not quite sure. This is something we may have to come back to. But uh, yes, if I, if I may complete. Yes, please, also. Sophie. Uh, of course, the, this concept of mission uh, doesn't come from our own <laughs> like that, uh, but it's, uh, it came also from the, from the, the commission um, asking to work on the objective on, on that the program should contribute to specific missions and, and try to, to. So uh, I suppose that this is why also uh, Horizon Europe is working on, uh, on this concept as, as we do. Uh, I, I, we don't, I, to be honest, we don't know exactly uh, how the Horizon Europe program has been built, but I, I, I suppose that it, it, it should be quite, uh, in the sim it's quite similar, yeah. Yes, and for sure we will, we will coordinate with these programs. Exactly. That's one of our, um, not only ambitions, but, but part of the way we will operate the new programs. So there will be, there will be the work there. Um, could you please clarify how exactly the missions work? Are they l like the thematic communities from 2014-2020? Go on, Christophe. Thank you. I, I think we, there will be some um, uh, there will be some information about how they are uh, working in uh, later on because uh, Pascal will uh, mention something about in, in concrete how they are working. And of course, they are inspired of, uh, by the thematic communities of the ongoing program. So they are, yes, they are developed, in, they are more developed now according to this program, but the idea has been taken up from the 1420 program. Yes, absolutely. I think this was for sure the inspiration, and that's why we will involve the horizontal projects and the thematic communities from the current period. Uh, to build on their successes, what they have learned, their experience, and help us launch this new program. And uh, the concept of the missions will be very much linked and uh, grouped um, from the different thematics that we had so far. I will, I will say something. Pardon? Je peux répondre une partie de la question. Okay, Lidwin, please. Uh, well, the concept of missions, where did it come from also from all parts? We talked to you about priorities, about objectives. These are mandatory uh, exercises that we have to, co to do with the Commission. We have to pick from a list that is given by the Commission. Our ambition for the program is to coordinate better with other uh, interreg programs, priorities, initiatives, and so on, which probably do not pick from the same kind of lists. So missions, it's something that can embed more widely some uh, specific objectives because we don't work separately. It's just like it's all results combined that uh, contribute to a mission. So the concept of mission is to open up these thematic or selected objectives to enable more cooperation with other initiatives and programs who do not have exactly the same item. So th this is why we came up with this uh, mission, uh, these types of, uh, of yes. concept. Yes, I agree, I hope absolutely. It clarifies because it, it's a lot of kind of layers. It sounds like a bit. Yes, a bit there confused. are different layers, and, and th this is why we're doing this today as well. To, before we start with opening the course, we want to make it as clear as possible what our intentions are, are and how the program will work. And I think it will become even clearer now uh, with Pascal's presentation. So, Pascal, um, the, it's your turn now to. Uh, going to, uh, you will present uh, something that I think, sorry, I'm, I'm uh, being confused myself. Um, you're going to present us something that I think will be very uh, interested to hear all of you, um, the different types of projects, and when do we actually start this journey. Pascal will speak in French. Yes. Right? So, headset, thank you. You can switch the channel, and maybe can I have a, okay, la présentation. Donc, on va parler des projets. So let's speak about projects now. And there's 
infrastructure, how to carry out this mission that Christophe just presented, well, by two thematic projects with four typologies, two typologies that I'll be presenting, and governance projects with two different types of projects I'll be presenting. So these two project families are interconnected, and the projects will be enriched. For the first um, project family, thematic projects, so projects that will provide studies on issues identified in the Mediterranean and propose common solutions. Then um, projects testing these solutions or either strategies, actions that the uh, projects will define and propose, and then transfer projects in charge of integrating the uh, results produced and tested in other policies and by other um, outreach uh, actors. These three projects are called modular projects. And we have a fourth typology, these strategic territorial projects, which will pick up on the process, the study, the test, and transfer but will target a specific territory which has been identified by a program in its member states. For instance, on the islands, an issue in the islands, ports, mountains, and so on over the programming period. So these different projects will provide, will produce results, achievements, which can be combined, reused, and valued, enhanced uh, due to synergies with other projects, namely the projects of the same of this of the other governance family. You have the first typology, which is a thematic community project. And you can see the different uh, the four characters. Then the institutional dialogue projects, which are represented by these bubbles or boxes. These two types of project will meet the specific um, objective of the program to, to obtain a greater territorial governance in the Mediterranean. Now, to, s to speak about thematic community project, they're organized around the four missions that Christophe presented to you and will be in charge of organizing the previous project study tested uh, uh, territorial strategy. So they will organize that community, enable exchange synergies between themselves, and also transfer of policies in the Euro Mediterranean territories. That is, the territories part of the program, which I forgot to mention. There will be one project per mission, so four project on the entire programming period, which lasts seven years. And so the second um, typology will work the same way. That is one project of institutional dialogue permission for total, which will last uh, seven years. And it will they will work on the support to dialogue between actors concerned by all programs thematic, but they will work on the Euromed, the work and beyond that. So they will promote a structured coordination and also will integrate the results to, so as to obtain a more sustainable impact. Now, in this um, governance family project, they're interconnected. The two project typologies will work hand in hand, will respond to the strategy of result amplification, which wants to create the conditions to better approach issues in the Mediterranean by involving all stakeholders in coordination to open a bit more, to be open a bit more, to open more. and this uh, with the support of the different partners that Sophie mentioned. And to sum up the thematic project, you have the first family thematic project with studies, test, transfer strategies at a territorial level that will work more on Euromed. And the second um, typology, governance projects with 
of institutional dialogue and thematic community, which will ha which has a specificity that is, they will mostly work in the Euromed zone, but they um, they will uh, transfer result with a pivotal uh, connection so as to support and be able to um, to support the dissemination of these results. These are the different types of project. Now, concerning uh, the practical aspect, when will be launched the calls for projects? We have foreseen two in 2022, two calls. I will mention, um, I would like to mention that the this program hasn't been fully approved by the Commission. We still have um, to define implementation, final bu budget. We should be receiving it. We want to submit the program next month in January. And normally, uh, if everything goes well, the program should be approved in April, May of next year. We're not going to wait for it to be approved. We're still going to launch the first call beginning of February, because we think everything's going to go well. And the first call will be on governance projects, what I presented to you early. That is institutional dialogue, one permission, and thematic community, one permission as well. And the second call will concern modular project study, test, and transfer, and will take place, will start, will be open at the beginning of the summer in June and we'll close after uh, summer in September. So we're working on drafting the specifications for the first call. It's almost completed. It's almost been and you'll be receiving all details on our on our site, uh, activities, partners, budget, procedures. You'll be uh, getting all details soon. In addition to the specification that will be the Bible for the call of projects, we have several elements um, that could be used to respond to that call. Between mid-January and February, we'll organize seminars so as to have a return of experience or feedback from 2014-2020, those horizontal projects, strategic projects that could provide us their view on their thematic an analysis and uh, commu community building activities, uh, um, mentoring and so on, mainstreaming uh, liaising. So they've worked a bit on the program. So it's to um, uh, get a return of feedback. And once the call has been open, there will be a seminar for diff for applicants where we'll have detailed the terms of references, tools, procedures. We're going to respond to all questions that have been raised. And finally, at the end of drafting um, the applications, we will hold a more targeted uh, seminar. These are the dates. Uh, you can book these dates. You can take a picture as um, targeting on partnership indicators, uh, budget eligibility uh, of expenditures. So the this is the information about the seminar and the follow up or support we can provide to um, our applicants and also tools for the first call. A new program which should be ready at the beginning of the year in January. Our new site, not program site, internet internet site of the program. On that site, there will be a forum to, which will allow you to exchange uh, information to create new partnerships, a section on frequently asked questions so as to provide a maximum of information. And what is new? The novelty is the application system, which is, uh, which is changing. It will be GEMS joint electronic monitoring system, which will also be um, available when the call will be open. And we will uh, post the manual on how to use that new tool. This is all about practical questions. I hope you took some pictures. OK. Merci, Pascal.
Yes, thank you. I think it, it was all clear, and there was a lot of information, very important information. So yes, please do stay, stay tuned with us, and more information, more details about the course will come very soon. Um, but before we move on, uh, just there, there's one word that you have heard a lot from us in the last few years, that's capitalization. And you know that we're very keen on this concept, and we always strive to take it further, to make sure that our projects resonate across all the Mediterranean. So we have finally Lidwin, who will introduce our, in this new approach, we will make that all happen. Okay. Strategically. Okay, well, Lidwin. thank you. Back in English. Uh, all right. Uh, I'll let you switch to English for those who will need, no, to French. <laughs> So, um, result simplification strategy. Well, the first question is why the result simplification strategy and not a more commonly so-called capitalization strategy, as we heard the word several times. Uh, to fully understand why we call it this way for this programming period and what it is about, we need to go back a bit in time to uh, understand how the program evolved over the two previous programming period in its search to impact sustainably and positively the Mediterranean area and how we went uh, from a simple, simple capitalization plan to this current amplification strategy. So as we said, the ambition of the program is high and as stated earlier, it goes way beyond the competences of the program alone. So the principle of capitalization, which firstly meant um, to reuse and disseminate the project's results very um, rapidly entered the life of the program uh, as a necessity to increase the benefit to the territories. So during the 2007 and 2013 programming period, going back in time, uh, we had a capitalization plan. It was based on two major components. On one hand, all partnerships implemented capitalization activities at the end of the projects to disseminate or export their own results. On the other hand, these are the black people there, which doesn't have anything, you know, just for the color, but uh, the program hired ex external experts to identify ex post thematic links between projects and they aim at forming clusters, trying to combine already achieved results to be valorized within the program area. Uh, the outcomes of this experience were mixed, highlighting several weaknesses. These weaknesses, first, uh, the partnerships implemented activities that were mostly limited to broad dissemination events uh, of isolated results and with little focus and sometimes no tangible results. Um, they didn't always have, so the partnerships didn't always have sufficient skills to, or time to carry out more targeted and efficient capitalization actions as to reach the proper stakeholders. Um, other things, the results were not very often comprehensive enough and would not always have enough weight to really make a difference on a larger geographical area or a complex political scene. Another thing was that the intervention of external experts from the program made the analysis of outputs and results really long and long process and difficult. And the clustering process was rather uneasy, especially after, after the projects were over with, uh, with results. And these results were most, mostly isolated, scattered, because every project, project had worked on its own or her own corner, I mean, all uh, the partnerships had worked uh, separately. So the results were quite fixed. They were not also very much adaptable. You know, they had been developed for a particular territory uh, or an issue, and their adaptability had not been anticipated. And they were not very much uh, reusable as well. Uh, we had different formats, not uh, exploitable sources, methodology were unexploitable or inaccessible, and uh, the results were not very much combinable in the way they were developed. One more thing was that uh, the capitalization activities were planned at the end of the projects. And uh, the clustering process that we tried through uh, external expertise occurred after the completion of the projects. And it was too late to be very much effective. So in short, 
in short, what we can say is that the conditions for capitalizing the results were not met, nor at the project's levels, nor at the program level. Sorry to be that, <laughs> that negative, but it was a long time ago. Thus, um, during the 2014 and 2020 still running period, uh, the program worked on improving these conditions for capitalization. And the capitalization ceased to be an activity that was grafted on the projects at the end of the cycle, but it became an integrated activity. So to this end, it proposed different types of projects from the standard ones that we used to, we were used to. So we have talked about modular projects that were um, presented earlier. So this is how they were born, and as well the horizontal projects, which, were, which are the precursor of the thematic community projects that we also presented. So, modular projects were this time clustered from their very start, and horizontal projects followed closely their developments, uh, and they supported the exchanges and the synergies between themselves throughout the implementation of the projects, and they supported the effective transfer of results. In addition, during this, for this programming period, the program understood quickly that to impact really the Mediterranean area, a better coordination of actions between the many overlapping programs, initiatives, and strategies um, operating in the area and addressing similar issues was essential. So that's why, since 2014, capitalization of results has been closely associated with the process of improving governance. And it's in this sense that the program designed um, governance projects. They were the platform for dialogue, Panoramed, and the strategic projects. Um, they were also presented earlier by Sophie, that have nourished, uh, they were, have been nourished by the results of thematic projects. It means that su successfully produced tested and uh, transferred results were meant to feed the exchanges between the actors and impact the multi-sectoral, multi-level and transnational Mediterranean territorial governance. So what we had here was that capitalization has progressively taken on a more strategic dimension by moving closer to governance issues, embedding the major actors of the Mediterranean within and beyond the program area. The outcome of the experiment was rather positive. So what we had was, we had more focused actions towards stakeholders for, for one thing. About the partnerships, they were more suited, they, they had uh, more competences to integrate results and to carry out transfer and mainstreaming activities with relevant stakeholders. The horizontal projects comprised thematic experts, so the expertise was inside the program this time, and they performed real-time analysis of results and facilitated the development of synergies between the clustered projects. So they could collectively improve the modular projects' results outreach and favor the transfer, effective transfer in um, coordination with the governance projects, which had also and they weight in the balance. So, with all this process and all those different types of projects, finally results gain more weight, uh, as they were not isolated anymore. And I think that's the key word, not being isolated. Uh, they were also more adaptable, um, because they have been developed right away from, with the idea of being eventually transferred and to be adapted to new environments. They were also more reusable, because at uh, the program level, the format were more suited. We, we, we put some constraint on the projects to uh, make also the sources and the methodology available to other programs. It was a constraint. And therefore, all this made them also more combinable. So uh, one thing also important is the capitalization activities were implemented from the start of the projects and throughout their implementation which enabled the development of effective synergies. At last, uh, the thematic results contributed to feed an evident-based uh, dialogue between Mediterranean actors, initiated by 
the governance projects to improve the Mediterranean governance. This association of capitalization and governance issues take the capitalization activities one step further that is embedded in the result simplification strategy. So, for this programming period, capitalization so far was considered as an activity rather than what we think that it should be, which is a collective state of mind, meaning that all together we need to keep this issue in mind in all the actions that we take. It's like recycling. For it to be, for it to be efficient, it cannot be punctual or just the doing of a few persons. Um, all part ne parties need to be involved with coordinated, coordinated, specific and clear rules from the start. That is the first particularity of the result simplification strategy. So having learned from the past, the program proposes to implement, again, modular projects, then thematic community projects, and you see also that the results, huh, right away we have the symbol of being reusable, combinable, and um, uh, more valu valu valuable. Um, we go so with uh, institutional dialogue projects that will explicitly complement each other in the nature of their tasks as we, it was explained by, uh, by Pascal. But in order to be really efficient, the strategy needed to involve explicitly also all the protagonists in the process with identified roles and tasks from the conception and for uh, the whole duration of the program. Therefore, the complementarity of actions is extended to the monitoring committee the managing authority, the national contact points, the joint secretariat, but also to all relevant actors within and beyond the programs. Of course, these actors were already present and active in the previous periods, but not with a clear identification of their roles and tasks, and not in a very structured and coordinated way. The second particularity of the amplification strategy, which gives it its new name, is of course the close association of the capitalization processes with the process of improving the territorial governance that is reflected in the three general objectives that translate that vision. So the first objective is to, and we, the two first objectives are the one that we, we see very similar in other programs. So the first one is to facilitate the exploitation, sharing, and reuse of knowledge, experience, and project results by other interreg Euromed projects uh, or, or the programs and promote the production of relevant work. The second one is to encourage the transfer of practices and results to other actors and territories and their integration into local, regional, national, and European policies. And the third one is to increase coordination between actors operating in the Mediterranean based on this knowledge, experience, and results. For each of these objectives, the strategy defines clearly complementary roles and actions for all actors. I'll give you some short and very simple examples. For instance, reuse. The monitoring committee will validate terms of reference promoted by the monitoring com managing authority and the, secret the joint secretariat with specific attention to the use of results, for which med actors will be consulted. For instance, what could be the re relevant work that should be taken into account by all projects. The Joint Secretariat on this side will make available material and results that the projects will have produced, making sure that the format enabled proper reuse, while the thematic community project will foster synergies between ongoing projects. You can see example of all, they all complement territory and we all have a, a role to play. An example on transfer. 
The national contact points, for instance, they will identify potential receivers along with institutional projects, dialogue projects that, we, that will analyze the regional and national set of play, while the thematic community projects will provide technical knowledge to transferring results produced by the modular projects in an adaptable and transferable way. At last, an example to support better coordination, monitoring committee and managing authority will foster the conditions as well as the national contact points to identify opportunities and engage in liaising activities through also the joint secretariat and the institutional dialogue projects. Once again, in this process, thematic community projects and modular projects will support the evidence-based approach. <laughs> well, the strategy task includes a detailed list of different types of activities. I showed you, you know, I just explained some very simple ones just so that you, so that you catch the, the spirit of, uh, of this uh, result simplification strategy. Here, next, is um, following a schema summarizes the overall interactions between all protagonists and the nature of their respect respective responsibilities. So, the program authorities support, basically support the joint secretariat actions, such as in the definition of, um, the, help of an, the help of the definition of the terms of reference that they validate. The terms of reference frame the actions for all the projects under the thematic issues and the governance issue. Modular projects will mainly produce, reuse, integrate, and consolidate the knowledge to feed into the governance projects. Thematic community projects will optimize the conditions for sharing knowledge and valorizing results and they will also favor transferring and mainstreaming processes. While institutional pro dialogue projects will amplify the dialogue with national and supranational authorities to integrate results and improve coordination among actors within and beyond the MED area. All the projects will receive the support of the national contact points, as well as the joint secretariat, and notably, in involving strategies, initiatives, other interact programs, other um, thematic programs, because we talked about Horizon, uh, networks and Mediterranean frameworks in joint activities and coordinated efforts, which will be the issues that will be discussed in a round table and which constitutes one of the first steps of working together for this period and making the result simplification strategy hopefully a success. I hope that this will convince you to uh, all enter, uh, enter the round and uh, also um, participate in these different tasks and responsibilities that we all share and we are all complementary to each other. Wow, thank you, Lidwin. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's all good. Um, yes, uh, thank you very much for all of your presentations. I think we needed to, to, to have that as much detailed as possible for now to introduce what we have, um, what we are planning to, to launch for, for you uh, and for all of us to, to respond to these objectives of the new era of the Mediterranean. Uh, so we have a long journey ahead of us, for sure. And uh, at the moment, we have in our hands uh, a, a map and a compass. Uh, uh, so ambition, objectives, and missions to make it happen. So stay tuned, as in the coming weeks, we, we will announce the, the opening of our first call for projects uh, dedicated to thematic communities and institutional dialogue projects, as you've heard, which will lay the foundations for um, the modular projects 
who will uh, follow a few, a few months later. Uh, before we move on to anything, we've had a lot of questions from um, all participants, and uh, we will. I think it's important that we take some time to answer as many as possible now. I know we're running a little bit late, but uh, it's important that we, we, we cover some of these now. And, uh, and if we have not been able to answer you now through the presentations or, or, or now, uh, we will still answer them and you will find uh, the, the, the answers on our website very soon. So first, uh, will there be a governance platform similar to Panoramed? for the current period, or will governance projects play this role? Well, um, Panoramet, just a reminder for those who don't know Panoramet, I, I cite it, I, I, I said the name, this is the governance platform that we had for this programming period. And this is really the project that opened the door to, um, to really the simplification strategy um, uh, with, uh, with the, 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 the lizing activities that it initiated. So, of course, we learned from our mistakes as well, meaning that this project was really very wide and lacked sometimes focus on the different topics that we had, and we had a lack of coherence. So, as it, said, it says in the, in the questions, the governance projects, the institutional like projects will take on board the different uh, experience from Panoramed in the liaising and mainstreaming processes. So it's a revision. We, have four, we will have four different dedicated projects to a specific mission that sounds for us to be more effective than a wide, uh, uh, just one single platform of dialogues for all different uh, missions. So this is narrowed and more focused. Uh, but uh, there will be some activities that were um, uh, developed by the, the governance platform Panoramet that will surely be, be capitalized in these uh, four different projects. So it's just a baby of Panoramet. This is the continuation of uh, Panoramet. Good, good. Okay. Thank you. Second question. Will there be restrictions for the participation of governance project partners in Modular, modular projects? Okay, uh, the terms of references are not yet validated by uh, our committee. Uh, so how I can answer to this question, our proposal is no, there won't be any restriction for the participation uh, uh, of partners that will be in the governance project in modular project, but this for the moment is not yet approved. Yep. Okay, can you clarify? the yes. associated partner opportunity with South Mediterranean countries. Okay, so uh, here um, what is important to know is that we cannot um, finance directly partners which are from the southern so shore of the Mediterranean. But what we can do is to associate them to projects and to partners which are in the eligible area of the program and to give them the opportunity to participate in some key activities uh, of the projects so that uh, they will have the possibility to follow up all the works of the project, to participate in some seminars, working sessions, exchanges, uh, workshops, etc. Uh, and if they have some expenditure, some travel and accommodation expenditure, for example, to participate to those activities, these will be covered by the uh, financing partners. So this is for the direct uh, participation through associated partners. But of course, the work we, will, we, we are doing with uh, frameworks uh, that covers the, the, the southern shore of the Mediterranean, like the Union for the Mediterranean, for example, gives also other opportunities for partners from, um, uh, partners from the southern shore of the Mediterranean to participate in the work of the program in a more global way. Yes. Uh, next question, which I think is uh, linked. Uh, can networks based in Brussels be partners? Is there still a 20% available for EU partners outside the Mediterranean? Uh, networks based in Brussels can be partners, of course, of the, of the program, uh, as they are in the uh, EU uh, part, uh, in the um, 
um, uh, EU, um, uh, how to say, eligible uh, uh, area, but uh, there won't be uh, any um, um, threshold of 20% uh, anymore. Okay? Okay. Sorry, can you, can you, I think there was some, uh, can you repeat the last thing you said? There won't be the 20% threshold anymore. No, it's not in the regulation uh, anymore. Okay. Should projects aim to the mission in general and more precisely to one or more specific objectives? Okay, each project has to tackle one specific objective, not more than one, but contribute in the wider mission, okay? So the finance is on the specific objective because this is the regulatory framework. Okay, do we have time for more questions? Okay, a project will include more than a mission or more no. than specific objectives? No, we've answered that. How many thematic projects ah. that will be in the new program? They will be they related with each mission. Mm, and sorry. how are the former modular projects will uh, be separated? Again, permission. Can we have some examples? Okay, so mm -hmm. thematic community project, I suppose, was the question. Uh, there will be four thematic community projects, one permission. Uh, and for the modular projects, they will be uh, clustered depending in the application form, they will have to, uh, to, to choose a specific objective. And also, they will, of course, have to explain their approach and how they contribute to one of the four missions. So they will be um, separated in the four missions in that way. Okay. So for example, some examples, maybe in sustainable tourism, which is the more uh, transversal one, we will have uh, projects under the different specific objectives that have will uh, implement activities linked to sustainable tourism and they will all together contribute to the mission <laughs> on enhancing sustainable tourism for example okay perfect one last question maybe no okay I think I think we're ready to to close this session my colleagues very uh, many thanks to uh, your for your participation for your clarifications and uh, uh, very soon you will find um, our new website that will be launched uh, also along with the the first calls so um, in the meantime you can find all the relevant information about the new programming period on our current interreg medeu program website. Um, so keep an eye out for the announcements uh, about the publication of the course because they will, uh, in the first instance, take place there. Before we go for a break, uh, let's check quickly how Daniel is doing and uh, what he's drawn for us. I don't know if we can see on the screen, uh, but it looks like he's done already a full picture of everything that we've discussed in this first uh, part of the presentation. Yes, look at that. When we have it all in one, on one sheet like that, it looks, it looks very easy. But actually, as you know, there's plenty to do for us. OK, and this will be posted as well uh, in, in, in the, in the post-event um, section of our website. OK, uh, I think we, we all deserve the break now after all this, uh, this information. So I invite you to enjoy your coffee for those of you who are here. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Hope you're still uh, um, with us at home as well. And uh, we, will, uh, we, will back, we will be back in half an hour. So please be back at 4 PM, Lisbon time. Uh, and we'll just take 30 minutes. So please make sure to be back on time, because we will start back on time at um, 4 PM. Thank you very much.